we will be checking out the ls function in R and see how it operates and also understand why uh, the code rm the code rm list is equal to ls is actually written before many other scripts that you'll see when you work on R and it's actually recommended to use before you start any new project or any new script right so this is kind of an important line which may, many of us just don't dig deep into and many of us just don't want to understand why it works and why is it important. Um, just to give some insight, it just cleans the objects created in R. Now, what do I mean by that? So before that, we need to break this function down and understand what different parts of it mean. So let's just talk about the ls function, right? Um, the ls function, it tells us all the objects that are available in R in its memory, which can be called back whenever we want to use them in any operation. So let's say I'll declare a couple of variables, a is equal to 5, b is equal to 4, c is equal to 3, right? I'll just run them. So as you see here, I have three uh, commands run in the console and I have three values here in the environment which have been stored in the memory, right? And the what does ls command do? If I run the ls command, it just tells me, okay, there are three objects in your environment called a, b, and c, right? This is what ls command does. Now, if you don't know what ls command does and if you don't want to Google it or if you, don't, you just don't want to waste much time on it, there is an easier way as well. The easy way is just go to console here on the right hand side, press a question mark, write the command and press control enter. And you see here in the help bar downstairs, it just tells you that ls command lists objects, right? It just tells what kind of objects are there and then you can dive deep into the documentation if you want to know the different arguments, the different patterns, etc. what happens with the command ls, right? Okay. So coming back to it, ls is basically a list of all the objects, right? All the objects available in the environment of R. Now, what does rm command do, right? Again, if you don't know what the rm command does, so we go to the console, we write rm, we run it, and we get to know, okay, it removes objects from a specified environment. Okay, so if rm commands remove, so I should be able to remove one of the variables like a, b, and c created with those commands, right? Okay, let's try it. So I'll do rm and I'll write a and I'll run that command. Okay, this command is run, you can see in the console and you can immediately see that in the environment, a is missing now. A object has been removed. Similarly, let's run it for b. You see b is also removed and if I run it for c, c will also be removed. And now it just shows me that environment is empty, right? So RM commands just remove whatever you want to remove. Now, there is another part of the same command that we have still not discussed yet, right? We have discussed the ls function, the list, the, which lists out all the objects available in the environment. The RM function, which removes the object that we want to remove. Now, what is this list is equal to, right? Why, why do we need this list is equal? Again, we want to know what does this function do. We'll first create a line of it and we'll go to the console. List. This generic and dotted pairs, right? So what does list function do? List is okay, create a list is equal to ls and just run this command. It runs in the console and it tells me that the, that the list has been created. Now if I run the list, I get no characters because I don't have any other characters in the list. Now, if I were to start all of this again, right? If I were to start this whole code again, what will happen? I'll again declare the variables a, b, and c. I have a, b, and c in the environment. Now I won't remove these variables because now I want to type deep into the, the main formula, right? I'll create a list. So now the list uh, 
code when it runs you can see it it has characters a b and c together and when i run list the console also says that list variable has a b c so now my environment has four objects one object is the variable a another object is the variable b third object is the variable c and the fourth object is a variable called list which contains objects a b and c okay let's say i want to remove all of them together right first let's do it one by one mail so like we did before remove a run it a is being removed remove b b is being removed remove c c is being removed and then remove list and now we see it again and the environment is empty okay now let's declare the variables again a b c have been declared again and now what i'll do is i'll just run a command which we talked about in the early part and we can just you know see what it does now now if i run this command you see my environment becomes empty altogether right so why is this exactly happening list is equal to ls list is equal to ls this highlighted command here is basically putting all the objects in a list right it's putting all the objects in a list and then rm function just removes all the objects right and it's just removing all the objects hence all the objects in the environment are removed but now we get another thought okay but why do we need to add a list is equal to right you told me that ls tells me the list of all the objects i just create the variables again so that we can talk about this next point so ls creates all the objects the ls command tells me okay there are a variable b variable and c variables in the list so if i just want to remove a b c together should i just you know rather than removing rm a rm b rm c i just put rm ls here right this should work right in theory let's just try it out. I run it here and they and we get an error. Error is saying it can, must contain names or character strings, right? This won't run because ls just states just lists out the ls just states the number of objects, the objects in your environment. But if you want to remove something, we need to tell it to remove thing, you know, all the objects. It, I mean, ls just tells you that these objects are there. Rm commands needs to know. Which they want to remove one by one. So ls will is only a stating function. The moment you allocate ls to a list, rm list is equal to ls, right? Automatically, when you do something like this, list is equal to ls. You see, there is a new variable created, which is a list. And in the rm function, if you run everything, environment will be empty. Now, why does list is equal to works in the rm bracket again? just go to console type rm and you can see remove objects and you can see that uh, there are many things that can be used in rm function the, in the arguments you can see list a character vector naming objects to be removed so whenever you want to remove objects in your r environment you need to use the list argument in rm function hence this this line of code is generally used before starting any of the new things so like now let's say uh, I declare the variables again, write abc and I start on a new line of code. I new file or script. I st I want to start on a new file and now I don't I, I don't want a is equal to 5 or b is equal to 4 or c is equal to 3 while I work on it, right? So maybe I just you know have something called a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to 7, right? But and then and before I uh, you know do that, I want to compute a plus b plus c. Sorry, it's a plus b plus c, and I want to equate it to t, right? But before I begin that, I should before I should actually clear them, clear my environment because just in case one of these commands don't run or you know I don't select one of the environments or I you know I just run. A and B and forget to run C, then my sum will be computed incorrect. It will be 1 plus 0 plus 3, which will be 4. But my sum needs to be 
my sum needs to be 1 plus 0 plus 7, which is 8. Right? So what I'll do before starting my code is I'll just write rm list is equal to ls. I'll run this and then I'll a, B, C, and then D. So automatically, if you see my environment now, uh, my values have been taken correctly as per my code, right? And that's wh why uh, clearing your environment before starting any code is very, very important in R. That's why whenever you start with any other script, any new code, or any code that you are evaluating or debugging, make sure that this command is actually where it belongs and we use this command before starting any new script so that you can keep track of variables in your environment and objects in your environment so that it, you don't get confused if the code is you know like 200 or 400 lines or, or even larger than that for a code of 20 30 lines i think it can be easy because there won't be many objects but if the code extends a certain amount of limit you need to make sure that you keep track of objects only created by the code you are working on and not by the pre-existing or multiple scripts that you have in your studio. Uh, so whenever you're starting a new script, new code, it's always better to clean the environment. And I think with that thought, I'll just, uh, you know, end, end the video and please use this function to make sure that, uh, you know, what, how is it performing and what is the use of this code or this line which we most most of the people who i've met have been ignoring this since the day they have been working on r and please uh, you know share this like this and uh, tell other people to tell other people why this function is actually a very good function to use whenever they start coding in r thank you mm -hmm.